Hello and welcome to the next session. This time I'm here with Book from Lemlist. I came across them a few months ago once I started to get really active on LinkedIn and started to think about how can I structure outreach campaigns for my agency. And so uh, Chris, whom you're also going to see later today, recommended me to Lemlist and their content and their tool. Um, and then I realized that they actually have a very impressive growth story and pretty much started from zero to 8 million ARR in just a few short years. And so I'm very excited to learn from you, Vuk, today, how you manage to grow so fast. And as a head of growth, I'm sure you have lots to share. And for everyone tuning in, um, you know that we are in the comments, so feel free to, to pop your questions into the comment and we get the conversation going there as well. And with that, book over to you. Hey, hey everyone. Uh, I'm super excited to be here. Uh, thanks again for the invitation and uh, shout out to Chris. Uh, special shout out to him. So without further ado, I'm just going to jump right into it. And just pop my screen. And uh, boom, here we go. Okay, so first and foremost, I think we all did a, did a good job. Uh, I'm not going to repeat anything, but I will say that uh, I like to brag with the fact that I'm the first employee uh, that Lemlist hired uh, back in the day. And this was the email that uh, actually, you know, how I called email, the cold email tool founder. And uh, this is how it started uh, back in uh, Paris Station F. And this is how it's going. So besides the fact that uh, we crossed 8 million ARR at the end of Q2 this year, uh, we also have a, like, a much bigger team now with, uh, I guess, more than 40 people. Uh, in the uh, in Lemlist, right? But uh, today, the the main growth, uh, the main four growth pillars that really led us to here and that were really pivotal, we're gonna go through all of them. Uh, that and uh, it starts with B two B outbound sales engine. And uh, the way we did it is obviously uh, with our own tool. So this is a good thing. And uh, I think one of the recommendations that I always that, that I always want to give is uh, use your own tool uh, to grow your own business. Sometimes it's more obvious in our case, you know, to use it to send cold emails and uh, eventually multi-channel outreach. But for some, it's, a, it's maybe a bit different, but I still believe it's important. And uh, we, in our case, with, with outreach, uh, the fact that I want to underline is you always, the goal of the cold email is always to start a conversation, not to sell. Um, because ultimately, you want to first get a reply, then book a meeting, and then sell. Kind of like a, a mini farm, right? So you want to steer clear from this. Uh, and I don't want to give like a bad rap to anybody. I used to send bad emails uh, when I started out. So it's perfectly fine. But what you want to do is you want to personalize it. You want to make it relevant. And you want to focus it on creating kind of win-win situation, going from a great relationship to win-win uh, situation and get through replies like this. Uh, whether we were talking about cold email, LinkedIn, or whatever, like cold calls, whatever the case may be, you always want to focus it on uh, having this uh, beautiful win-win setup. Uh, and the great outreach, that's different outreach, that, the outreach that works, it starts with research. Research is 55, uh, more than 50%, like I tend to say like 51 to 55, but uh, uh, percent of work, because the better the research, the more qualified your list is, but the easier it is to write um, uh, to write your email and to make it personalized. So if I take an example from Simon, who's, uh, who's my colleague, uh, what I want to do is I don't want to just have a generic intro line. I don't want to have, uh, you know, to come in a situation where I email uh, a prospect, in this case, Simon, without really knowing who this person is. And uh, I want to deeply understand the pain. I want to understand how can Lamblist actually help and can Lamblist help? Because if it can't, then I don't want to email Simon. So it starts with deeply understanding the pain. I also want to see the status of Simon's uh, company and sales team because Lamlist is obviously uh, connected with, uh, uh, with uh, sales and uh, marketing potentially teams. But what I'm, what I'm trying to say here is uh, I want to see buying signal. So if Lamlist is hiring, so because let's imagine that Simon and Lamlist, I'm pitching to him. What I want to do is I want to see if uh, they're growing their sales team. So if they're growing their sales team, it's a buying signal that they're investing more in sales and potentially they need a good outbound tool. I also want to see if they crossed any milestone, like if they recently got funded, um, you know, scaling their efforts. So these are all buying signals based on which I can, I can use as a conversation starter, right? I also want to see what kind of posts Simon has been sharing. 
Uh, is he sharing anything that's relevant to me? Is he sharing anything that's relevant, you know, uh, in a sense of uh, that I can use to start the conversation? Do we have any common ground? Can I base my email uh, based on his activity? And also, is Simon talking on podcasts, conferences, any relevant, um, you know, online uh, infrastructure that I can use to start the conversation? And finally, uh, I can also connect and start to engage. Prior to ever reaching out, I can connect to Simon on LinkedIn without any really agenda and just engage on his posts. Uh, and then when I reach out one day, I'm, uh, it's different. It's not really like a cold email. It becomes a warm email. So research is really important. Uh, then it comes down to prospect intelligence. Um, you know, scraping emails, um, not really like scraping, but getting professional emails. Uh, or in if you're doing cold calls, it's going to be cold calls. But what you want to do is you want to use a set of tools that give you verified emails. You want to use professional, not free. Uh, we do this through our landless LinkedIn extension. So I, I'm going to, when I'm on a Simon's LinkedIn post, all I got to do is use my extension and send it, uh, send it to Lamless, send it to the right campaign and get the professional email address. But here, what's really important is you want to have a verified email so you don't have the high bounce rate. And you also want to have a professional email address. This is really critical if you're doing outreach. Then it comes down to deliverability and fighting spam. Because if you have a verified and a professional email address, your bounce rate is, is lower, but you, you also want to land here instead of here, right? Uh, I don't want to go into details around deliverability because usually it's like complex uh, and uh, people get scared like, okay, this is where it becomes technical. But I have this article and if you're in football, you understand my Jose Mourinho meme, but uh, this article will lead you through like steps you got to do from setting up your you know, email provider to warming up your uh, email address to setting custom tracking domain and everything in probably uh, less amount of time than, than usual. And this is what you really want to do because the vulnerability comes down to open rates and comes down to warming up your email. Because if you see that your open rate is below 50%, you might have a you might have a deliverability issue. Your emails uh, prospects might not be seeing your emails, and it's not the time to play with subject lines. This is the time to play with deliverability. And then uh, the probably the most important component. So if you've done your research, uh, you've you've optimized the deliverability, and you have the the verified and professional email address from your prospect, this is the time to really send an email. And now we're talking about personalization and relevance. Starting with things like this. So this is one of the templates that uh, that I've used in the past. And this is the framework. And you can see everything that's in blue. It's actually really unique for every prospect. So it starts with a unique intro line. And uh, I always say that this is the best way to break the ice. You want to have a relevant uh, uh, intro line for every prospect. And what I mean by that, you can you can get inspiration from anywhere. You can get inspiration from LinkedIn. You can Google and see if uh, there are any news, like there, let's say there's like Google News um, component that you can leverage. You can also use Google. You can, you, can, you can do it via their LinkedIn activity and everything that I mentioned in the research part. And then this comes down to having like a, a, really, a really relevant uh, and a really personalized intro line. In this case, all I, all I did is I went to uh, online communities, in this case, Facebook communities, and I can notice and say, okay, I can come into the community, use the internal search filter of the community and say, cool, okay, I'm going to filter outreach. I'm going to filter email durability. I'm going to organize my list in segments and I'm going to use this in, as, as an inspiration. In this case, it was email durability. Uh, this person was uh, using cold email closures community to have, uh, uh, to get some advice on how can I like uh, maximize it. And the next component is in building relationships. How do I transition from a, from an intro line to my pitch? So in this case, what I'm going to be doing is anybody who's having a uh, uh, deliverability challenge, I'm going to uh, focus on making it really uh, leading by example. So you can see that my intro line and that my pitch are really about producing value and starting relationship on the right foot, right? And what I'm doing is exactly that hey i had this issue before i solved it and uh in the bottom you can see a custom custom image and this is the way it's super short email super sharp uh, and all i'm doing is really giving uh, my prospects uh, value i'm explaining how i when uh, and, and our team how when we got in a situation to 
uh, have multiple people sending emails, how we solve vulnerability and uh, how we are really doing it. And this personalized image, it's wonderful because it's, it, you know, it's a pattern interrupt. It grabs people's attention. You can see a unique first name thanks to Limelist. I don't want to like pitch Limelist at this point, but what we're doing with Limelist is having great vulnerability and these cool custom uh, custom images, in this case, personalized with a thumbnail. And this really helps us like stand out of any crowd and uh, have people see how we actually did it. Another thing that we're doing with, with outreach is uh, multi-channel, uh, where we you know connect LinkedIn, where we connect uh, uh, sometimes cold calls, but in most cases it's going to be LinkedIn and uh, vulnerability. So we're trying to build relationships with people, positioning ourselves as as uh, thought leaders. So in this case, we start to engage, uh, uh, we start to connect with people on LinkedIn, then we start to expose them to our content, and then ultimately we reach we reach out to them on. Um, LinkedIn and cold email. And if you want to see more templates that really crushed it because we have other growth pillars to go through, um, this ebook is free. Uh, there's no pitch. There's like literally a lot of templates in there from, from, from us, but other uh, email outreach experts as well. So you can see and check them out, right? Uh, the important thing before we move to the, growth, to the other growth pillar, um, you want to focus on uh, sending less emails because the objective is never to be the fastest to, test, to send hundreds and thousands of emails. You want to send less because sending less gives you opportunity to qualify, gives you opportunity to figure out how can I be relevant to my uh, prospect and gives me an opportunity to uh, get a higher reply rate because I never want to send 20, uh, more than 20 LinkedIn invites daily. I never want to send more than like 200 emails max on a weekly basis. And I always want to have, you know, ambitious KPIs that I want to have my open rate uh, above 50%. I want to have my reply rate about 20% because now I have time to personalize it. I can have 2000 people in my list, but I don't want to send 2000 emails out of a sudden just because the vulnerability will suck, but also reply rate will be low. And you always want to focus on having like a 10% 10 conversion rate. So if I'm sending 100, uh, 100 emails, I want to have 10 meetings booked at least. So these are the benchmarks that you will know that, you know, your, your outreach, your uh, outbound and your vulnerability is really healthy. Uh, and these are the metrics that you, you would, uh, that I recommend uh, you to inspire. The next thing, and now we get into a bit more marketing is having a vibrant uh, and having like a community for us, it was, uh, a Lemless family is a community that started right after the first product hunt launch. Everybody was invited in the community and now we're still inviting everybody who's our user, but also people who are not our users. Uh, and the objective is always to have a vibrant community, uh, to have, uh, not to have it like a, your extended sales kind of uh, a funnel, but to have it something that where, where people can actually get added. And for us, it's like around 70K, 70K people 17,000 and uh, you can see how many people are really really active so we're investing a lot in qualifying keeping the conversation really value driven and having people really getting value from it and you can see back in the day it was what was uh, it were comments like this so vibecov actually started the conversation around uh, warming up emails uh, and uh, this led to uh, building Lamborn, which is one of our key product differentiators uh, in the market and the conversation started in the community. So first you get inspiration around uh, product feedback and everything around that. So you want to keep it transparent. You want to have all the good times and the bad times because this is what creates like a really vibrant but also open community where people can say, okay, I don't like this feature or I think this feature is great, but can we talk about how to use it? They also get enormous amount of inspiration around content. Um, around tools, around what kind of funnels they use. So you kind of build your own distribution network. And having a distribution network from an early, uh, from, a, from a, like day one is really critical because even like for some SaaS uh, people, some SaaS founders, they start building community prior to building their product. And then through the community or in our case, through the experience because G had an agency before launching Lamlist, this gives you like enormous amount of intel on how you can position, what kind of differentiation to chase. And, and it gives like your community a sort of like, a, this uh, puts you in a beautiful uh, moment to get enormous amount of and enormous amount of really valuable feedback. 
in terms of what content do we post? So we try to have every, like we don't promote all our articles. We don't promote a lot of stuff. We focus on really delivering best types of content. All our announcements are really personalized, are really oriented towards product-led storytelling and kind of making it through, making it show people that we understand the pains uh, and uh, having like this open and wonderful uh, networking exclusive webinars, having people, uh, giving people opportunity to network with other people. Uh, and uh, when it comes to distribution, all we do is really refer people to the right content in comments. So we don't, like I said, we don't, uh, we don't uh, promote uh, heavily our content. What we want to focus on is uh, make this community a place where people can learn, uh, get inspiration, network with other people, find potentially uh, clients, uh, find potentially people to hire. So it's really about people. It's not about our content. And if you want to join, this is a QR code. It's free. Uh, and uh, if you want to talk about, and I think this is really important, how to connect community back to MRI, you don't want to do it like straightforward. We do qualification. We do it through emails. We gather emails at the, at the beginning, but we never really send sales pitches or land list uh, stuff to these people. We do some enrichment on the, on the back of it, and we send some leads to sales. But uh, you want to make it really qualified, and you want to, uh, because this will lead to having a healthy conversation. When it comes to product-led storytelling that I mentioned, so what we do is really similar to how they did with the blog. You want to make your product a part of a solution so that people can see, ah, oh, okay, I can use Lamlist for my uh, you know, multi-channel and cold email outreach, but you never really want to make it obvious. It's just part of a solution positioning, uh, positioning in the right way. And then this leads to word of mouth because believe it or not, nine, like uh, the, the biggest, uh, channel for us uh, is word of mouth, and this is the strongest uh, lead, uh, uh, strongest lead source for us. Word of mouth recommendations, uh, branded search, and community is a great way to do that. Then uh, content marketing. This is really pivotal. Where we really feel that we're really good at is content marketing, and these are kind of results that we have. So it's not just traffic; it's not just organic. We're just, you know, uh, tip of the iceberg. We really need to dig down deeper in SEO, but it's also word of mouth. Uh, it's uh, people sharing it with their colleagues, people leaving comments, people sending you DMs. And these are all the results that you, that you get really from awesome content besides SEO, but also branded search. Branded search is really key for us. And this is how a funnel looks like. On the top of the funnel, we have things like webinars, vlogs, PR. And then it goes a bit more into product-led storytelling and then masterclasses in product marketing. And if we break it down, the vlogs, uh, our vlog, like our CEO, Guillaume, has uh, uh, his own vlog. Our CTO, co-CTO, Vienna, has his vlog. And Simon and Nadja have their sales vlog. And every vlog attacks the uh, specific audience. And it really serves to generate awareness and, and get people uh, to know who we are and get people really in our funnel. Then we have interview with experts where we invite all kinds of people from you know, companies like Zoom Info, Aircall, where we interview them where we really get into this actionable stuff. How did you do that? Like, what was the, what was the pain? How did you solve it? And our people and, and the community and everybody who joins this webinar, these types of webinars, they have an opportunity to get into really like one-on-one -on -one conversations with these people and get inspiration. And this is, this is what I mean by being value-driven. Uh, when it comes to PR, we really reach out and uh, connect with people and speak on different events. Everybody in the team is involved. So from our head of sales to, you know, CEO and, and myself, obviously, and uh, <laughs> Simon from the, from the slide before. Uh, and then the content itself, uh, it's not only product that can have differentiation, it's also your content. So in our case, when we started, uh, a lot of people were sharing templates without really, uh, you know, explaining why they worked uh, without any data. So it was like, okay, did they ever send this template? Because it feels a bit generic. Uh, not to like give a blast to anyone, but what we what we really focused is okay. We used our own product, and then we shared everything. So these are the templates that were bad. These are the templates that didn't, you know, got us any results, but they they got us like valuable lessons. And these are the the templates that worked. And here's why they worked. So we educated our users and brought them inspiration, uh, which ultimately led to be building like a lamlister of the week up where people started sharing their own uh, results in the community so we said okay cool let's build a cool hub 
uh, with a lot of different templates, with a lot of inspiration, with a lot of different, you know, sequences, follow-ups, uh, how did they do this, what kind of industry, and uh, um, creating this wonderful hub with a lot of templates, which ultimately is awesome for the word of mouth because it gives uh, people, uh, people share it, uh, they bring us traffic, but on the back end, we also promote their stuff to our community and newsletter. So if you're an agency offering uh, outreach services, it's a wonderful way to get exposure to thousands of people and to get some clients. So it's back to those win-win situations. So this is how this particular like template silo uh, evolved and what it is today. Uh, also like, okay, there's like uh, obviously articles and guides and, uh, but uh, we follow and uh, we picked the brain of one of the guests of this event, so Team Solo are around this. So this product led storytelling and really giving people enormous amount of actionable tactics and tips on different things and then connecting it back to your product and how your product is positioning it as a solution. Uh, and then, you know, having organic traffic and, and uh, having brand and traffic and, and all that. Uh, ebooks as a, as a lead gen panel, we started doing this this year and it's proven to be great uh, because ebook is really something that's a bit more, you know, gives you an opportunity to get really scrappy and uh, give people even more insights with it, with the, the two ebooks. And it really worked like a charm. One connected to the LinkedIn, uh, to the, sorry, to the cold email and the other one to the LinkedIn where we really scrape into how LinkedIn helped us and, and uh, give people a lot of value there. YouTube is something that we're heavily focusing on them at the moment. We had some stuff around product marketing, but step-by-step -step tutorials and all that, but we're really investing a lot of efforts in YouTube at, at this present time. And uh, it's really great because then these videos can be embedded in a lot of, in a lot of cool places and it give your people additional, uh, additional value in, a, in another form. So uh, a lot of content. Then at the bottom of the funnel where we focus on is uh, product marketing and masterclasses. Masterclasses is something that, uh, you know, like a huge actionable course, obviously it's paid. Uh, we have two at the moment, but also product marketing content and, and really like at the bottom of the funnel, what you want to do, you want to nail the timing. You want to give this the exact specific piece of content to that person, uh, uh, depending if we're talking like a free trial user or a paid user, or if, if you see they have a specific issue, we're going to deliver uh, uh, behaviorally like the right uh, uh, piece of content in front of their eyes and ultimately distribution. So I always say that 51% uh, of, of work with content is distribution. So if you have like a, a, a this like a pillar content, it, whether we're talking about an article or maybe in your case, a video or a podcast that you did, you want to focus on distribution. So in our team, uh, there's like social, but social means people, uh, every people, every person in the team can share it on LinkedIn, but share it in the right way. So sales team, shares content in one specific way, marketing shares in another way, and we're going to get into this in a bit. Then communities, we have our communities, but you also have community of others. You don't want to be this, be a spammy and promote every single piece of content, but if you can uh, make it into something really relevant for every community, this is another distribution channel that you can tap into. Uh, an article can become a long video. You can cook it up on slides and present it in, in a video and vice versa. Same for podcasts. You also have your newsletters and lead nurturing stuff. And you also have guest posts, indication links and all that. So you want to be really smart about distribution. And uh, there's a, there's a, I think Gary Vee published this, uh, how he distributes content and uh, this inspired our distribution model. And this ebook is also free. You can find it on Google. And if you create this engine and uh, a healthy distribution, it's how you eventually get traffic. And finally, probably the most important uh, and most exciting growth pillar is LinkedIn because it really is like a, an amazing organic pillar that helps us achieve millions of views in, in a, uh, on a monthly basis. Because in our company, everybody's active. Everybody is investing a lot in their personal brands. But they're also, we also have this uh, uh, distribution funnel on how we distribute important stuff. And uh, LinkedIn is really, you know, we know uh, uh, for organic, one like can really change everything. You can have 10 connections, but if that one connection gives you that one like, it really can can do wonders for you. And uh, when we're talking about like targeted LinkedIn distribution, how we distributed, so to go back to our uh, cold email ebook, we use the simple, uh, you know, comment and uh, uh, comment bait uh, uh, tactic, and, but we were really strategic in the way we distributed. So everybody did it. And you can see the amount of comments and the amount of really traction that it generated for this ebook. And these are just three people. There are more than 50 people, who, 15 people who are really active on LinkedIn uh, in my list. And so we do this really strategically. And it's not just, ebooks it's 
viral campaigns. It's uh, anything that's really important, masterclass launches and, and, and coming back to lead gen. So if, if your company is active on LinkedIn and you have a targeted approach to how you distribute stuff, it can really do great. But LinkedIn is about personal brands. So we also have people, uh, everybody's investing in building their own personal brands, networking, connecting with people, sharing value. So if your marketing team connects with people within the marketing sphere, if your uh, founder connects and becomes an inspiration for a lot of other entrepreneurs, if your sales teams focus on kind of like sales and uh, prospects and all that, but you also have somebody from support, you also have somebody from you know, your office, everybody can build their personal brand and everybody can use LinkedIn to you know, spread brand awareness, but also to connect, learn and all that. And if you, if you, have, if you inspire your people and you give them framework, uh, because GE was the first one, obviously, as a, as a CEO and, and a founder to start this, but then he documented everything and it's the process that everybody uses. And we're all at the different stages, really, when it comes to LinkedIn. And another important thing, I, I believe, like, if you want comments, you have to get into this mindset that you have to comment first. So from time to time, it's really great to just open up, fire up your phone and start leaving really genuine comments on people's stuff. And you never know who you're going to meet. You never know. Uh, it's great for exposure. It's great to build your, uh, you know, uh, uh, build your profile up. But it's also really... Uh, a great way to meet with people because sometimes somebody can be your next team, uh, like your next colleague in the team, your next client sometimes, but also somebody who can connect you with people and who you can connect uh, with other people. So if you want comment, my one one comments, my always uh, advice is start commenting yourself uh, because it's uh, it's the right way to do it. And uh, it's like this is why it matters to your business. Uh, if uh, 15 plus people are developing meaningful networks and you know, with different verticals within your target audience, sharing valuable content on LinkedIn, building powerful brands and, generating, it will, and eventually generating a lot of views, this is this snowball effect that you want to have. And uh, with that said, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it up here and I hope you allow me into my <laughs> 20 minute uh, uh, time. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, I really appreciate your, your presentation. You, you and your team, you're doing a lot, right? You have a phenomenal blog and awesome YouTube. I'm curious, how many people are in your marketing team today? Uh, currently with the interns, around seven. Seven, wow. And, and how many people, what was, when, when you were the only one, and maybe you and G doing the marketing, yeah, what was the first thing that you did? Was that the email outreach? Uh, it was always outreach. Uh, yeah. Because it, it was like a wonderful combination of, oh, custom images, how did you do that? So a lot of replies mm. were, how did you do that? But also, right. hey, uh, I want to test it. So it was like a beautiful symbiosis, but it was also community. Right. Community was from day one. And I love your focus on... You know, don't send 5,000 emails, send 100 good ones and actually get people to reply. I'm curious, who who writes your snippets, right? You showed your template and like half of the email is unique. So someone has to look up the person, come up with a good thing to write. How does that process look like? Do you have someone in your team who basically does that? Does everyone does it for their own campaign? How do you structure that? Uh, on, I guess it, it depends if uh, I like to do it myself. Uh, mm. I never, I, I, I really, sometimes you don't have time, but I enjoy this process of uh, creating these kind of things. But yeah. for me, I'm not in sales. So mm. my outreach today is more networking, marketing, mm. partnerships. Back in the yeah. day, it was salesy, but then yeah. I had more time to it. I, we weren't creating this amount of content. So I had right. more time to do sales. For sales, sometimes for the icebreaker itself, there yeah. can be like a team effort, but since it, this is the thing, like if you focus your uh, your like list of having really yeah. targeted prospects, then you give yourself this time to really personalize it because right. you're chasing conversions. And if you right. have more replies and not this insane momentum of let's just fire up a 5k list and have like some comment in the, like a genuine compliment in the beginning and just fire it up. Then you, right. all this time that went away, uh, scraping, finding emails, generic, if you focus this time on sending 
personalized, targeted 100 emails, you have more time yeah. to do that. Yeah. So it's usually yourself, uh, but with the team effort, potentially you can qualify stuff. But right. I think I think everybody likes to do it themselves because nice. it's your own voice. Understood. We're we're kind of like short on time, but I want to ask one question because I'm super curious about it. Um, a lot of people run online communities. There's LinkedIn groups, there's Facebook groups, there's Slack groups. And in my experience, a lot of online communities are pretty dead. And what I mean by that is it's usually the creator of the online group who posts there. And then maybe you have like five diehard fans that post and comment on everything. And oftentimes 90% of the people just kind of sit there. And so I'm curious, you put a lot of emphasis on, on the vibrant group and participation. And so you seem to have nailed it that people actually engage. What is your trick for getting people to engage in your com community? Yeah, I mean, number one, don't be too promotional. Uh, there's like uh, hundreds of blogs and, and blog articles that have never been shared in that community. So you never yeah. really want to make it about, you know, your like extension of sales. And mm -hmm. on another case, you want to qualify and you want to we give this like a helicopter view of this conversation. You never really right. want to have everybody share everything because then it becomes too promotional. Uh, there's like a lot of junk content. And on the other hand, you have to be uh, to get comfortable to be uncomfortable when somebody says, hey, your product, I don't like this feature. Right. So I think it's managing and, and managing this conversation and not being too focused on yourself and right. then being smart about how you grow your community. Yeah, I like that. And then final question, again, this is my curiosity. So you're seven people now. Um, and then obviously like G as a personal brand, who does what? Like what 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 are the job roles of the seven people? Yeah, so if, if you add G and uh, probably his team, we can we can land up at, at 10. We kind of divide it into people who are in G's team. So G has yeah. two people yeah. uh, who help them, you know, navigate all this uh, content on the personal branding side. Yeah. Uh, in my team, we're more focused on land list. So we yeah. have one person dedicated to the community. We yeah. have two people uh, creating content. Uh, we have people who are focused on lead nurturing and kind of more bottom of the funnel. And we have like a person involved in product marketing and uh, focusing on uh, when people are in the product, yeah. how to boost retention, activation and, and lower churn. So it's uh, organized through the funnel. Yeah. And uh, the, F the emphasis is on ownership. So the, the, the person really owning their, their craft. Amazing. I mean, you're getting a lot done with seven people. And yeah. I think that that is very impressive, but it also shows that a lot of people talk about value first marketing, but a lot of and not a lot of people actually make it happen. And I think you are a good example of a company that really made it happen. Um, Tim from Ahetros that you mentioned is a good example. Hannah from Thrive Themes. So the people who get it right, actually delivering value in their uh, in their content, do profit hugely from it. But most people don't get it right, and this is. Yeah, inspiring to see what you managed to create in such a short time. So Thank I really you. appreciate having you on. And where should people follow you? Is that on LinkedIn? Where do they find the best of, of you and your voice? Yeah, LinkedIn is probably the, the, the one that I'm most active. But if, if anybody wants to get in touch, vuketlamis.com is also, I keep my inbox really clean. I'm not one of those people who have like a lot of unread emails. So email on LinkedIn. Perfect. Thank you so much, Book, uh, for joining us today. And for everyone tuning in, we'll jump right into the next session. So see you there. Thank you a lot for the invitation. And thanks, everybody, for tuning in.